involves Long Beach State, your host, alongside Oregon State for their second matchup of the weekend. The first matchup went the way of Oregon State on Friday afternoon. And we'll get you the starting lineups in just a moment. But on the mound for the beach, or in the circle for the beach, Ashley Coleman. First pitch going to be just upstairs for ball number one. So Oregon State coming in 8-1. and one. This is the, what their lineup looks like. Shelby Weeks, the senior, leading things off, hitting left-handed. Left Followed by the DP, Lovey Lopez, hitting third is Missy Noons. They actually called that a strike, I believe, the 0-1. Going to be a bunt attempt. Going to be fielded by Coleman. Fired to first. And that's going to be in time with an emphatic punch out over there for out number one. So continuing down this Oregon State lineup, cleaning up at first base is Frankie Hamoud, followed by Bailey McLaughlin, Jessica Garcia, Chance Burden, Cameron Yabara, and then Maya Raider. Meanwhile, the beach defensively look like this at first base. Taylor Rowland, Sidney McCollum at second base, Nicole Fry at third, and Alyssa Gonzalez at third. First pitch in there for a strike. Fry making her first start and first appearance of the season at short yesterday. Meanwhile, the outfield a little bit different from the rest of the weekend. Going to be Naomi Hernandez getting a start in right field. Jamie Wren in left and Maddie Ruffin in center field today. Yo one misses inside one and one. And the battery mate for Ashley Coleman going to be Justine Briones. Now up Lovey Lopez, the senior DP. It's going to be her third start of the season, ninth appearance in the game. Coming into today, hitting 500 overall, 1-1. One, one. Weak chopper, it's going to roll just foul as Briones touches it right after just curled outside of fair territory, 1-2. and two. Coleman, the junior transfer, coming into today, the 3-8-2 ERA, 2-0 win-loss record. It's going to be her third start in the circle and her fourth appearance, seven and a third innings, giving up only four earned runs. Seven hits, struck out four, and one walk on the season. Beach in their all yellow tops is the one, two. A little bit of a misfire there from Coleman. Doesn't even get near the plate, two and two in the dirt. The beach, gold tops, black pants, gold stripes down the side, black lettering and numbers. Meanwhile, Oregon State, all orange tops and pants. Two, two. Going to just miss outside. Long Beach State fans kind of hoping that was going to get called, but no, just outside. The count runs full. Lopez lives for another pitch. Oregon State coming in. Had won eight in a row before losing yesterday to Ole Miss, two to nothing, over at UCLA, the other co-host of the Stacey Winsberg Invitational. 3-2. Misses low, ball four, so only the second walk given up by Coleman all year, and Lopez... Jogs down to first. That's her first walk drawn on the season. So Missy Noons, the sophomore coming in, 292. We had a pair of seniors leading off the lineup for Oregon State. Then the rest of the lineup gets actually pretty young. It's going to be sophomore, freshman, freshman, senior in the middle of the lineup, lower down, and then sophomore, sophomore, freshman. So pretty young lineup for this Beaver squad. First pitch, going to be in there for a strike, going one to Noons. Coming in, 292, 24 at-bats, seven hits, scored six runs, has 10 RBIs, second on the team, at least in the lineup today, and has three home runs. The 0-1 from Coleman, going to be chopped to short. Fry's going to have one play. She bobbles it, and instead she's going to have no play. So Fry, that's going to be her first error of the season. A little bit of a tough play, having to move around a little bit, come in. Couple hopper over there to short, but reaching first is going to be Noons and getting over to second is Lopez. So now first and second, one out. And Coleman facing a bit of a jam already early on here in the top of the first. Now you bring in Frankie Hamoud, the freshman, hitting 542 in nine games, all that she started. First pitch going to be in there for a strike, 0 and 1. Hamoud also 24 at bats, just like Noons, but she has 13 hits. Six home runs, 18 RBIs. So the absolute one player the beach did not want to face with one with multiple runners on in the first was Hamoud. And coming in, she wants to get the Beavers on the board. 0-1. This is outside, 1-1. One one. The Beavers, as I mentioned, started out 8-0. We're getting votes just outside the top 25, depending on which polls you look at. But we're looking to crack it by a weekend's end. 
Lost yesterday to Ole Miss after beating Cal Poly, another Big West foe, earlier in the day. 3-0. 1-1. Misses outside, 2-1. Oregon State, their 8-0 start. Tied for the program's best since 2003. And while time's going to be called, both Gonzalez and Roland come into the mound to have a chat with Ashley Coleman. Trying to calm her down, saying, hey, yeah, you may have walked the first one, but hey, normally Fry's going to get that at short. Just got to expect her to be a little bit better defensively, and we'll see how things move on. Now 2-1 and one the count, one out. Top first here at the LVSU softball complex. The 2-1 to Hamoud. It's going to be in there for a strike. Perfect pitch, 2-2. Two and two. Hamoud has more walks than she does strikeouts. Three strikeouts on the year, six walks taken. So very good eye at the plate, very good discipline. Coleman taking a look at the sign. Ready with the 2-2 as a big gust of breeze comes through. That's going to be chopped back up the middle. Nice play to second, and Fry steps on the back for one. So a nice play by Coleman. Tried to turn it. A little bit of some miscommunication there between McCollum, Fry, Coleman. She throws it a little bit now left of the bag. Good play there by Fry. Reaching over, making the grab, and stepping on second base for the out. So out number two, and what could have been very disastrous, turns out to be a nice play for Coleman. Two outs, runners on the corners, and you pretty much erase the bat of Hamoud as she just puts it, you put her on first base. So bring up the catcher, Bailey McLaughlin, the freshman hitting only 167. It's her sixth start of the season. First pitch. Going to be in there for a strike, going one. Nice outside corners. So Long Beach State trying to exact revenge. At the moment, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be one of two non-conference matchups that the Long Beach State team is going to have to get revenge against. The 0-1. Off speed. Beautiful in there for a strike by Coleman. Quickly 0-2. Because yesterday, Long Beach State lost to Boise State. As they're coming in three and five, losers of three straight in this home tournament. And they get to play Boise State in two weeks, March 2nd, but first, trying to split this seri season series against Oregon State. The 0-2 from Coleman to get out of the jam. And that's gonna be fouled out of play as McLaughlin stays alive. So runner at third base, gonna be Lopez. Runner at first is Hamoud, reaching on the fielder's choice. We'll see if Oregon State decides to do anything crazy on the base pass, or they're just going to let their freshman catcher go to work. So far in the season, two RBIs as a chance to put the Beavers on top in the top of the first. Coleman, ready, the 0-2 with two outs. Off speed, and they're not going to get that call, just a little bit low and outside, one and two. Got one to fall for strike two earlier in the at-bat. A beautiful off-speed pitch, but that one just a little bit outside. Trying to get McLaughlin the chase. Only two strikeouts on the young season so far for the freshman. The one-two once again. Here we go. Outside. Good stop there by Briones. It was yesterday the game-winning run scored by Boise State. A game that was final after six full innings of play due to darkness that the game-winning run came home in the top of the fifth inning for the Broncos via a wild pitch from Kelly White. It was a, the big controversial play at third base that went a non-call against Long Beach State as the 2-2 one two, the two two is skied out of play. Nice catch by a fan out there down the first base line in the stands. Quickly giving the ball back to the staff here at Long Beach State. So we'll go 2-2 two two once again. And it was that non-call was a triple down the line by Cora Wade. And she was scampering to third. A good relay throw to Alyssa Gonzalez. And it looked like she clearly applied the tag at third base for an easy out. Instead, a safe call as the 2-2 is not going to be in time. Not going to be in there for the zone for strike three. So we run full three and two. Coach Kim Sander came rushing out of the dugout. Complaining, saying, what, did, what were you looking at? Complaining to the umpires at third base. Asking for help from the other two. Didn't get her wishes as time slowly ran out with the darkness. But now full count. Runner at first will be off. 3-2. That's going to be popped foul down the first baseline and out of play. So Long Beach State just been having some bad luck recently. Three straight. Lost to Fresno State, Oregon State, Boise State. Now gets another chance and another crack at Oregon State this weekend. 
of each this year. Every single win that they've had, they've scored 10 or more runs and had 10 or more hits in those three wins. When they've lost, well, they haven't had the same offensive production. 3-2, grounded to third. Gonzalez boots it. Going to fire to first. Not in time as that gets away from Roland. Moving over to third is Hamoud, and Oregon State is going to be on the board first. And I believe that's going to be the second error of the inning. The first one charged to Gonzalez at third. So a little bit of a ground ball right there, booted by Gonzalez, trying to pick it up. Had enough time, but just kind of rushed the throw. Roland couldn't dig it out at first. And now the beach trailing early on, one to nothing. Here two outs, runners on the corners with Hamoud scampering over to third. Good battle there by the freshman McLaughlin, taking pitch after pitch, putting him out of play, putting him out of play, staying alive. When you put the ball in play, hey, things happen. And they're actually, on the scoreboard they're saying hit, but they also say two errors. So that first pitch in there for a strike against Jessica Garcia. But I feel, I feel the, the official ruling is two errors, which is correct. So Oregon State on top first in the top of one. One nothing, the beach. Gonna have Fry, Hernandez, and Wren do up in the bottom of the first. It's a counter. The 0-1. Swung on and missed. Tried to slap at that one. Didn't get any piece of the ball right there. Did Garcia. So quickly 0-2. The senior, the center fielder, Jessica Garcia, swinging left-handed. This is gonna be her 10th start of the year. 276 batting average. Trying to bring home another run for the Beavers. 0-2 as I feel a quick drop of rain as that one just misses outside a little bit up to 1 and 2. So I was looking at the weather forecast. I got here in the midst of the Ole Miss Boise State game. And it was blue skies, pretty pretty good sun, but then well, it's a 30-40% chance of rain around noon. 1-2. Swung on a missed strike three. And with the rain forecast, it's getting dark gray clouds, pretty windy. Couple droplets of rain, so we'll see how that affects the rest of the game. But after a couple of errors from the beach, you give up one run. The beach got the fourth unearned run she's given up this year. Meanwhile, Long Beach State gonna bring up Nicole Fry, Naomi Hernandez, and Jamie Wren, top three, facing Mariah Mason. First pitch, chopped to second base, quick out. So one pitch, one out, and Nicole Fry yet to get a hit in her senior season, two games in. So for Long Beach State, it's going to be followed up by Naomi Hernandez, the sophomore hitting 312. Let's get you set up for Oregon State defensively. Left to right in the infield, it's going to be Nunes at third, Raider at short, Yobara at second, and Hamoud at first. Meanwhile, the outfield left to right, Burden, Garcia, and Weeks. Catcher going to be McLaughlin. Meanwhile, that first pitch to Hernandez just misses 1-0. Long Beach State's batting lineup looks like this. Nicole Fry, who just grounded out. So one out, nobody on for Hernandez. Naomi Hernandez up. Jamie Wren, followed by Alyssa Gonzalez in the cleanup roll. Taylor Rowland hitting fifth, followed by Tierra Fallo. 1-0, not gonna get to the zone there, so 2-0. Sydney McCollum at second, hitting seventh. Justine Briones hitting eighth. And then Maddie Ruffin making her second start of the year, hitting ninth. So 2-0 to Hernandez. We got things started yesterday with an RBI double. One of three RBI doubles in that first inning where the beach jumped out to a big time start three to nothing. And meanwhile, the count goes to three and zero to Hernandez. The beach looked like they were all over Boise State early on. And will the bounce, the starting pitcher for the Broncos after just about two hitters in. Rainey Dyerson as the 3-0 was pumped in there for a strike. She gave up, a, she hit Nicole Fry in her first plate appearance. A couple of wild pitches sent her to third before Long Beach State started their RBI double parade. Got removed in the middle of the third batter, but then Long Beach State could not do any offense, anything offensively after the first. That's gonna be chopped to short. Nice play over to first in time for out number two. Great snag there by a Raider. And that's gonna be a 6-3 put out, getting it out now Hernandez. number four, Jamie Wren. So now bring up Jamie Wren, trying to get some two out offense going for the beach. The senior hitting 421 so far in five games, eight hits and 19 at bats, has five extra base hits, leads the beach in RBIs with 13. First pitch to Wren, gonna be a weak chopper foul down the third base line.
So Ren coming in 0-1. The count, two outs, nobody on. The pitch, swung on and missed. A huge hack there by Ren coming up empty 0-2. The beach from danger going down 1-2-3. Trailing 1-0 here in the bottom of the first. Still no hits on the game. Oregon State scored via a walk and two Long Beach State errors. One by Fry and one by Gonzalez who's due up on deck. The 0-2. That's lifted to left center. If it goes, it goes off the wall, and it's going to be a one hop off the wall. Extra bases for Wren. Two out double for Jamie Wren to get the beach started here. Maybe a two out rally try and tie things up. Right, as I say, there's been no hits in the first. Nice off opposite field hitting there by Jamie Wren. One hopping the wall and left center splitting the gap between Burden and Garcia. Ball seemed to have a little bit extra carry in that one. Meanwhile, at the end of the Boise State Ole Miss game, there's a high fly ball with two outs. Off the bat of an Ole Miss player with two outs. Looked like it was clearly gone, but it caught, caught up in the wind, where I think in any other ballpark in America, it might have been gone. So the wind's playing tricks here in Long Beach as the first pitch inside misses to Gonzalez. Gonzalez, the sophomore third baseman, getting now her fifth start of the year. It's going to be her 15th at bat. Make that her 23rd at bat. Hitting 391. This is inside again, 2 0. So 2 0 the count. Tying run at second base with two outs after a two out double from Jamie Wren. Gonzalez trying to knot things up here in the first against the Beavers. Pitch. That's a high fly ball to left center. I think it might get caught up in the winds. That's gonna be dropped in left center. That's gonna lead to a Long Beach State run. It was crushed by Gonzalez, but as I mentioned earlier, the wind's playing tricks on the outfielders. Right there, it was Garcia in left field, make that birded in left field, and was kind of just standing there reaching out her glove, and it just popped right out of her glove in the beach. Get gifted a run of their own. And both runs scored have been off of errors. And it didn't seem like Burden was very confident because off the bat, Gonzalez absolutely demolished the ball. But then it was so high in the air, the wind kind of pushed it back into the side. She reached out and didn't really feel confident in grabbing that ball and ends up dropping off her glove for a two base error, leading Long Beach State to tie this one up one apiece. Meanwhile, bring up Taylor Rollins. And Gonzalez at second with two outs, one to know the count. The 1 0 pitch from Mason, the chopped foul. So both pitchers getting unlucky today, giving up unearned runs. Not enough bet one apiece here in the first. Total of three errors, and we're only in inning number one. If you looked at the first game, Ole Miss Boise State, they had a combination of seven errors, if I'm not mistaken. Six of them committed by the Rebels of Ole Miss in a 6-4 final win for Boise State. The 1-1 misses inside, gets away from the catcher. Jogging over the third is Gonzalez. So Roland now facing a 2-1 count. All she has to do is get a single to put the beach up top. Meanwhile, Oregon State's going to call time, have an infield meeting in the circle. Wasn't exactly sure if that was going to be McLaughlin's fault or if that was an issue with Mason. But instead, it's going to be runner at third with two outs. And both teams not playing the best defensively today. It is a bit cold. I, I can get that. Not exactly raining yet. So the conditions, I would say, only affecting balls put in the air. But it seems like te both teams a little bit sloppy so far in the early going. So Roland steps back in the box, two and one. Chance to put the beach up top here in the bottom of the first after they came trailing one to nothing. The two one. And that's gonna be blooped to the second baseman and copped for out number three. Roland's gonna strand Gonzalez at third base, but not before the beach. Tie the game after an error in left field by Burden, dropping the fly ball with two outs, allowing Jamie Wren to come home to score. And we're knotted up at one after an inning. Long Beach State. Oregon State softball coming up next here in the top of the second with 22S Radio and Beach on Beach Vision.
top of inning number two, Zach Anderson, Yax, I'm with you guys here at the Long Beach State Softball Complex. We're tied at one. Both teams getting runs with two outs due to errors on the opposition. So Long Beach State gave up a run due to two errors from Fry and Gonzalez. Meanwhile, Long Beach State gets one back due to an error in left field by Burden. So Coleman starting the second inning with a strike, 0-1. Long Beach State trying to find a way to get a win and stop this three-game skid. Up for the Oregon State lineup, the bottom three, Chance Burden, Cameron Yabara, and Maya Raider. So Burden trying to make up for her mistake in left field, the 0-1. Just outside, 1-1. One one. But as I mentioned, the wind blowing pretty strongly here in Long Beach this weekend. Been pushing balls out, pushing of play, putting them over the fence, behind keeping them in play it's been doing a variation of things with the softball when it's been put in the air so you can never know what's going to happen once the ball is lifted 1-1 one, one, just outside 2-1 and one. so three errors committed by combined between the two teams after inning number one we'll see what we have in store for the rest of the game Long Beach State next game going to be Wednesday morning here at the Long Beach State Softball Complex before they have a couple weeks away from home. And that pitch, I believe, catches the zone according to the scoreboard, two and two. Long Beach State can be facing Army at 11 a.m. Wednesday. Meanwhile, Coleman back in the circle with the 2-2 two -two to Burden. Swung on and missed strike three. That's gonna be out number one here in the top of the first. As once again, I feel a little bit of a drop lid of rain. We'll see if it's going to actually come down with the downpour, if it's going to be little pieces and bits of rain here and there. Very dark, gloomy day here in Long Beach after what started to be a beautiful blue sky day. Otherwise, it's completely changed if you just got here. Now coming up, Cameron Yabara. She takes first pitch strike, 0-1. Slowly feeling little bits and more of rain, so we'll see how this plays a factor into the rest of this one. We already had one Long Beach State game this weekend. Stopped short due to darkness, 0-1. That one just misses outside, 1-1. One one. So Yabar coming in, hitting 167, getting our eighth start of the year. One out, nobody on. We're tied at one, top of inning number two. Long Beach State needs this win in order to look pretty good for their NCAA tournament resume as that ball is crushed but way foul as Yabara was way out in front of that one. One and two. On deck gonna be Maya Raider, and then the top of the order for the Beavers. It's been a pretty cold weekend here in Long Beach. Yeah, you, you get it, early February, when softball starts, is that swung on and missed strike three, back-to-back -back K's by Ashley Coleman. So two outs here in the top of the second inning. Now batting, shortstop, number 44, Maya Raider. You have to deal with weather. Some, yes, inclement. Obviously, teams come to California to get away from inclement weather of other states, but it seems like California's been having endless rain in the first month and a half of this new calendar year in 2019. First pitch misses low, 1-0 to, no to Raider. But so far, Long Beach State has not had a game canceled, so they've been able to play all their games. Went to Vegas last week and back here in Long Beach. The one more non-conference matchup Wednesday before they head out on the road as that one is going to just miss 2-0. Their next big tournament schedule looks like this. They have three huge tournaments coming up in the next few weeks. They have the Mary Nutter Classic next weekend inside or in Palm Springs, California. The 2-0. Going to be weakly chopped to second base. McCollum gets it. Quick shovel to first in time for our out number three. And Long Beach State's also going to have the San Diego Classic and the Louisville Slugger Invitational when they will return home in a couple weeks. But more on that coming up through an inning and a half. We're still tied at one as the Beavers go down one, two, three. The Beach going to have six, seven, and eight coming up in the bottom of the second here on Long Beach State Radio Network and on Beach Vision. The 
unearned run charge to her in the first inning was the first unearned run hers she's given up as she blows that one by follow, tipped into the glove for strike three. And that's going to be a strikeout victim for Mariah Mason. Bring up Sydney McCollum, the junior. She's hitting 238 on the year, but does have a 448 on base percentage. So the junior does know how to get on base. Starter at second base. A couple days at short as well, but prefer second base as that first pitch is in there for a strike 0 and 1. Big pop of the glove once Mason just fired that one in for the strike zone. Mason taking a quick look at her wrist for the sun. Long Beach State getting some words of encouragement from the faithful here. Weak chopper up the middle in the circle. Easy field right there by Mason, and she fires to first in time for out number one as Hamoud squeezes that one shut for out number two. So two quick outs here in the bottom of the second inning. And bring up Justine Briones. And it seems like both pitchers are kind of dialed in despite their defense not being the most sharp behind them in the first. Both pitchers trying to trade one, two, three innings. Those the beats with the two-out double in the first. We'll see if they can get that again as Briones takes a strike 0-1 on deck. It's going to be Maddie Ruffin. Briones hitting 400 on the year. She's going to take that off speed outside, one and one. Got eight hits in 20 ABs. Six strikeouts, two walks, one home run on the year. Another double, so two extra base hits in those eight hits. Five RBIs, four runs scored. Briones, the 1-1, one, one, huge cut and a miss. Saw that one at her eyes and instead came up empty. Pretty well out of the zone, one and two. So one ball, two strikes, two outs, nobody on here in the bottom of the second inning. The pitch just misses outside. Home plate umpire Lauren Head saying, oh no, that's just a bit outside. Two and two, evening up the count. You know, amazing, just around 25 pitches through the first inning and a half. 2-2. Two -two. That's going to be a nice ground ball. Going to get through to right field for a two-out single play at first. Not going to be at time as cheating in the right field was weeks, but Briona is hustling down the first baseline knowing, hey, I might be a catcher, but I still got some speed no, as she beats the beat. out the throw. So Long Beach State gets another two-out base runner, and both their hits today have come with two outs. So now bring up Maddie Ruffin coming in. Had an opportunity to play second base, but she's mainly an outfielder, and that's where she plays today in center field taking the spot of Breezy Wise, who played yesterday in right. Huge swing and a miss, 0-1. So Manny Ruffin coming into today, 1-7 one one for seven overall in the year. Two outs, runner at first. Long Beach State trying to get yet another, another two-out rally going. Huge pop of the glove. Doesn't get the call there, but hitting her spot is Mason, just not in time. Just not to the liking of lower head. So one ball, one strike. We're tied at one here, bottom to the pitch. Swung on and missed once again. Ruffin coming up empty with a, a huge hack right there. Head coach for Oregon State, Laura Head. Make that Laura Berg. Laura Head, the home plate umpire. Laura Berg in her seventh year as the one two misses outside, two and two. Played her college days at Fresno State. Funny enough, Oregon State played Fresno State on Friday, beat them. But it was Laura Berg winning a national championship in the Women's College World Series back in the mid 90s, making multiple trips to the Women's College World Series with Fresno State. As the two two is cut on and missed, the second strikeout victim of the inning for Mason. She gets three beach players right there. Lestrand's a runner at first, so after two innings, we're tied at one, heading to the top of the third. Oregon State going to have their top of the lineup 
do up. We've got more coming up here on 22S Radio and 1-2 gave up a two-out single and then got the third with two strikeout victims. So Coleman trying to answer her own 1-2-3 inning with a first pitch ball to Shelby Weeks. Weeks, the starting right fielder, trying to hose Briones at first as the ground ball was hit sharply to her and she was playing pretty shallow when she plays defensively, but didn't get the outfield assist that she wanted. On base percentage of 286. The 1 0 in there for a strike, 1 and 1. As the leadoff hitter should, she hits rather well when leading off an inning. 375 batting average. Eight hits on the young season. First inning and a ground ball to short. The 1 1 from Coleman. Can be low. And looking at the Long Beach State players, they're kind of mix and match over who's wearing long sleeves and who isn't. And I'm surprised Coleman's not wearing any long sleeves. Can't wear anything that resembles the color of the ball, but the beach with their yellow uniforms, black long sleeves, as that one catches the zone two and two. Now, all of Oregon State's players wearing black long sleeves underneath their jerseys. Get some, some players a little bit more accustomed to the, the breeze here in Long Beach. I'm certainly not yet. Been here four years. 2-2. Two -two. A little weak slapper to first. Roland going to make the tag on the runner down the first baseline instead of stepping on the bag. So one unassisted with the tag for Roland. One out. Don't know why Roland didn't just take the one step backwards, but I guess she wasn't exactly sure of her positioning. It was like, all right, let's just do the sheer thing and make the tag. No way Shelby Weeks is going to do a, an Alex Rodriguez and just knock the ball out of my hands. So one out, nobody on. Bring up Lovey Lopez. Lopez takes a strike. First inning was able to work walk and came home to score a run on a two-out error by Gonzalez at third base. Trying to get the Oregon State offense going. The 0-1. Huge off speed. Big breaker, but not really close to the plate there for Coleman. So far, two and a third. So in about 45 pitches through these two and a third innings. Face 10 batters. Now has 10 strikeouts to her six walks coming into this year. The 1-1. In there for a strike. Good pitch there for the Cal Baptist transfer. Nice, can, nice crowd here for a Sunday afternoon matchup. Oregon State having to travel between here, go back to UCLA, and then come to Long Beach once again. 1-2. Slapped foul out of play. So the, the Beaver faithful out in force in all beanies. All jackets just like the Long Beach faithful are. Except the beach... Been able to stay at home all three days. And yes, Long Beach State's going to face the co host of the Stacey Winsberg Invitational later on in the season at home. So that matchup coming up later on against the number one or number two team in the nation as the one two just misses upstairs two and two. When these two teams faced off on Friday. The final, 4-2. to two. Long Beach State tried to have a late rally to tie things up late. 2-2. Two, two. Swung on and missed. Just trying to get a piece of that one, but waving and missing was Lopez, the senior, going down, swinging and missing. Two outs. And Coleman's in a bit of a groove. Bring up Missy Noons. And big thing is, if you let Noons get on base in any way, got Frankie Hamoud on deck, the big bashing freshman. So the... Two out, first pitch to Noons. In there for a strike. So Long Beach State played this Oregon State team on Friday. It was Oregon State getting an early lead in the first, just like they did today. Beach unable to respond until the fifth inning. At that time, they're already down four to nothing. That's going to be laced to right center, roughing on the run, and she's going to make the running grab. Nice. Fouls it back off the screen. Huge hack there by Fry. Not afraid to swing with two strikes for sure. So happens when you're a senior. Been always at the top of the Long Beach State order, whether it's been number two, leading off, number three hitter at times in different years. But now the, the Wiley Vets 
back for one final season here at the beach. Yo, two from Mason. That's going to be popped into foul territory and out of play. Wind pushing that one just foul. Looked like Hamoud had a chance to grab it, but then it slowly drifted foul, 0 oh 2. Nice battle here from Fry. Trying to work with the count as looking at my briefcase with the equipment, slowly seeing more, more water droplets coming down from the sky. 0 oh 2. That's lifted to left field, but foul. Fry hammers that one, but a little bit out in front of the off speed, so we'll do it 0 oh 2 once again. Long Beach State, kind of intermixing between four-year vet, two-year vet, four-year vet, 0-2, chopped foul, a little of a check swing there from Fry, unsure there, but luckily for her in the beach, rolls foul. So the beach lineup kind of goes like this, senior, sophomore, senior, sophomore, junior, then you get a couple of senior juniors and sophomore freshmen. So interesting lineup mix there by Coach Kim Satter this year, at least for today. As far as experience goes, the 0-2. Popped foul out of play once again. Good battle here from Fry. All with two strikes. 0-2 nonetheless. As now the umpire is going to have to get a fresh new set of softballs coming in. As Fry seems to just be losing him left and right. So we'll see how Mason deals with all these new softballs put in play. The 0-2 once again, leading off the bottom of the third. We're tied at one. Mason to Fry. Foul that again. Let's do it one more time. As she tries to hit that one off the, the new clubhouse for the soccer and softball teams. Pretty sure Coach Kim Satter, Coach Mauricio and Gracia will not be happy if she puts any more dents into that clubhouse right there. Pretty nifty setup for both the soccer and softball teams. The 0-2. And that's going to be lifted to center, but that's going to be right on the line into the glove for Garcia. So a nice piece of hitting from Fry showing, hey, with two strikes, I can take huge swings, foul it out of play, emergency hacks, and finally gets a pitch to hit, but just hits it right on the line to Garcia. And anything hit in the air, as I've been mentioning, has not really been carrying outside of things hit to left field. But a good frozen rope to center just caught and stung there by Fry. So... Still looking for her first hit. That's going to have to wait for later in the ball game. One out. Bring up Naomi Hernandez. Takes first pitch strike 0 and 1. Last at bat lasted nine pitches. All of them were for strike. So Mazin not giving in. Fry not giving in. Back and forth they went before a line out to center field. Getting an airplane headed to the Long Beach airport nearby it's that 0-1 misses outside one and one occasional flyovers here of over softball games whenever they're being played remember I went a whole season with that one flying over during a game which was pretty remarkable but now there's been quite a few this this weekend the 0-1 from Mason Hernandez chopped to second it's going to be fielded cleanly on to first in time nice play from Yabara to Hamoud two outs quickly for Mason. Now four, Trying to have her Wren. first one, two, three inning of the day. Bring up Jamie Wren, who in the first doubled with two outs and came home to score on a two base error, tying things up. So we'll see if she can do things again once with two outs. Huge gap there in left center if she wants to hit it right where she did last time. And she takes inside ball one. On deck going to be Gonzalez, followed by Roland. The only two with hits in the game, farther side, Ren and Briones, both for Long Beach State. Meanwhile, I'll do it for Oregon State, Frankie Hamoud, Bailey McLaughlin, and Jessica Garcia is 4, 5, and 6. 1-1 one one as Ren swung through that last pitch. Ryan trying to get things started for, with two outs once again for the beach as there's almost no blue sky left in sight here in the LBC. Just misses inside, two and one. What started off as a picture perfect kind of blue sky day slowly has turned into a very dark, gloomy, overcast, gusty 
Windy Day, the 2 1. That one's going to catch the zone, 2 and 2. Evened up here, two up balls, two strikes, two out. Bottom three. 1 1 here between the Beavers and the 49ers. On deck, Gonzalez, who technically drove in the only run of the game. No RBI to her credit, though, due to the error from Chance Burden in left. 2 2. Weekly chopped in play. It's going to be up to play from Mason to first. And that's going to be in time. Emphatic punch out by first base umpire Hal Van Rieswick. Very emphatic on all his calls at first base. Like he's trying to knock out somebody in the boxing ring with that emphatic punch out. Seemed like he should get in the ring with Mike Tyson with the, with the way he's swinging those arms. But after three, finally getting her first one, two, three inning. One, two, three inning is Mariah Mason. We'll be back. Top four, we're tied at one here on Summer with you guys. It's going to be four, five, and six. Due up for the Beavers. Starting off with the big freshman, Frankie Hamoud. Reached in the first inning on a fielder's choice. Huge swing and a miss. Good placement there from Ashley Coleman, who's now starting inning number four of work. Working on six, make that seven consecutive retired. Back to back, one, two, three innings in the second and third inning. Hamoud, 520 batting average, 618 on base. This is outside, one and one. Oh, and what, what is she hitting when she leads off an inning? Ah, oh, just a, a measly 600. 18 ribbies on the year. Can easily drive her, home, her own self down. As now the, the rain's slowly starting to come down more and more as it's one and one. So one, two balls and one strike actually. Now fans slowly starting to move further away from the stands and seek cover as it's starting to come down more and more. Two one in there for a strike, two and two. Light rain, but it's coming down pretty consistently. That was the danger for this Sunday morning afternoon matchup between these two teams. The rain was a very significant possibility. The 2-2, it delayed yesterday's action. Misses outside 3-2. The first game between Riverside and LMU was delayed the start time, but that game moved rather quickly. The big thing that hampered Long Beach State's ability to play a full game yesterday was the 10 inning affair between LMU and Boise State. 3-2. To Hamoud. Misses upstairs. That's going to be ball four. Ending a string of seven straight retired for Coleman. And of course, right as the rain comes down, Coleman walks Frankie Hamoud, which isn't exactly the worst thing, but still, it's not the best. As now the rain's coming down, going to test her ability to grip the softball in the circle. As now they're going to pinch run for Hamoud. It's going to be Carla Calderon. As now I'm just trying to cover all my equipment and everybody's trying to seek cover here at the LBSU softball complex. Not the most dramatic of rains though. So we'll continue play. So runner at first, lead off walk from Coleman to Hamoud. Bring up Bailey McLaughlin, chopper to second to first, and it's actually gonna be rolling, stepping on the bag. She thought about throwing to second base for a second, but wisely was like, you know what, let's just take the easy play at first base. Don't want to throw a wet softball into left field. So bring up Jessica Garcia, one out, runner at second base. Oregon State still looking for that measly first hit here in the top of inning number four. And yes, I said it, still nothing going in the hit column for the Beavers. Rain coming down pretty profusely now. Garcia takes outside ball one. So one ball, no strikes to Garcia, one out. Go ahead, run at second base, top four. We're tied at one. The pitch, can we chop back to second base? McCall him quick throw to first. That's gonna be in time for out number two. Good play by Sydney at second base. Oregon State first base coach would say, come on, no, give, me, give us a call. That time, first base umpire Hal Van Rieswick, not as emphatic with the call at first base. Just a simple, that's an out. Maybe a little bit playing with the weather, not trying to get as wet, just trying to stay within his own presence. 
and now the rain is just officially coming down. And that's in their first strike, going one, bring up. Chance Burden was her error in the first that brought home the only Long Beach State run with two outs, dropped the ball in left field as a high fly ball from the bat of Alyssa Gonzalez, standing there at third, and allowed the tying run to come home to score, and that's where we're at, tie top four, the 0-1. Weak grounder to first, Roland snags it, steps on the back first, and we're through three and a half. And Coleman has been on the roll through four, still tied at one, going to the bottom of the fourth. And we'll be back in a few as we're still tied as I get to try and find a way to deal with the rain here on 22S Radio and Beach Bears. Mason not really seeming, have, seeming to have a good grip on the softball in this circle. Seems to kind of grab some dirt, gets, get her hands a little bit drier, get a better grip. But we're still playing on here in Long Beach. Nothing too dramatic, but still it's affecting both pitchers today. The 2-0 to Roland in there for a strike right down the heart of the plate, 2-1. We'll see if Long Beach State's going to decide to play small ball in the next coming hitters, whether it's going to be Follow, Sidney McCullum, or Briones after Rollins. But first things first, the 2-0 or 2-1. Line to left field, that's going to be foul. As Roland got a good piece, just poked it foul, 2-2. Two and two. So the rain lightening up a little bit here, but it's gotten colder for sure. I can tell you that for a fact. Two and two at first base, Gonzalez. Surprised they didn't decide to use a pinch runner at first base. Pretty sure they didn't use one for her in the first inning. So the two two on the way to Rollins. Grounded shot slowly to second, to second for one. No, it's dropped at second base. It was a nice play at second base. Throw to shortstop who was covering. It was Jabbar to Raider, and Raider couldn't handle the throw. So that's error number two for the Beavers. So now the Beach have something cooking here in inning number four, as there's two on, no outs. That was a leadoff walk and an error. Gonna be charged, I believe, to Raider, because it was a good throw by Yabara. Just couldn't handle Trying to get some damage, it was yesterday. The Beach had the early three run lead. Came up with two runners on, crushed a ball to deep left field, but it hooked just left at the foul pole. So otherwise the Beach would have had six runs on the board early. Instead, her three run bomb did not work. As she takes a huge hack, fouls it out of play, 0-1. Wondering maybe Follow might decide to bunt, but with Long Beach State having McCollum and Briones up, Got McCollum who's only hitting 227, but Brione is hitting four, nearly 430. We'll see. 0 and 1. So follow, trying to give the beach the lead here. Bottom four. We're still knotted up at one. The one upstairs misses one and one. So one ball, one strike to follow. The senior. The 1-1. One, one. Misses way inside. Good grab there by the catcher, McLaughlin. Two balls and a strike. It looks like some fans are slowly returning to their seats, seeing that the rain's lightening up. As I do see some blue sky in the, the far distance, but right now we're still stuck under a big rain cloud. I can see the sun behind the the clouds trying to peek through, but 
Still raining here in Long Beach, 2-1. Drop to third, gonna be fielded, stepped on third for one to first. Double play for Oregon State. A perfect play at third base by the Beavers. The 5-3 double play, and exactly what you did not want for Long Beach State. A double play ground out for follow. And leave Nagosek at second base now with only two outs now here in the bottom of the fourth. So Noon's making the play over to Hamoud. A great play at third base, just calmly stepping on the back for one, not losing her footing. Great throw to first in time to get follow. And Long Beach State now down with two outs, bring up McCullum, and the go ahead run at second base. First pitch, gonna actually miss one and oh. The Beach had a grand opportunity there after the error at second base with Raider dropping the ball, but despite having two on and out as McCollum, a little bit of a three-quarter swing, goes around for a strike. And the Beach now have to find a way to get some two-out magic, which is what they've liked to do today, it seems like. Three, make that two two-out hits, trying to make it a third if McCollum can bring home the run. The 1-1. One, one. Outside, 2-1. and one. So two balls, one strike, two out. Go ahead, run at second base. Coleman's been on fire on the mound. Meanwhile, it's going to be Mason having to work through a jam all through the rain. The 2-1. That's in there for a strike. Meanwhile, Mason says, this rain doesn't phase me. We play in Corvallis. We know what rain actually looks like. The 2-2. Two -two. So two balls, two strikes, two outs. Go ahead, run at second base. McCollum trying to come up clutch here. The pitch, weakly chop back to the circle. Mason, the first in time for out number three. Allowing Hamoud to get to second and bringing home the next runner. So it was Lopez and Nunes coming to score on that single and an error by Red and left. So it's now four to one. A lengthy at bat there by Hamoud and she gets the better of it in the three two single to left. Only the third hit in the game for Oregon State. Now bring up McLaughlin. The catcher takes outside ball one and now Coleman bit on the ropes here. Four and two thirds. Has four runs given up, only three unearned at the moment. Or make that only two earned at the moment. Weak chopper to second, Sydney gonna pick it up, fire to first for out number three, but not before Oregon State comes through with some clutch hitting, three hits in the inning and they find a way to get the job done for three in the top of inning number five, and they lead four to one. And just like that, Oregon State works their way into the lead. We'll be back in the bottom of inning number five. The Beach trying to respond with eight, nine, and one of their own here on 22 West Radio and Beach Vision. Bottom of inning number five here in Long Beach. Four to one, Oregon State after they place a three spot in top of inning number five. Three hits, an error, a walk, 
And they find their way around the base paths after a huge battle from Hamu driving in one and then a second one coming in on the air from Jamie Red in left field. So now the beach, eight, nine, and one to try and respond. Now in the bottom of the fifth. First pitch from Mason. This is outside to Briones. One and oh. It's Briones today, one for one. The one oh misses, actually catches the zone despite the catcher dropping the ball, McLaughlin, one and one. So Briones, Ruffin, and Fry trying to get things going. Mason battled through a tough bottom of the fourth inning. The beach had two on, nobody out. Rain was falling. Mason not really hitting their spots. Misses inside. Then a huge play at third base by Noons, thrown over to Hamoud for a 5-3 double play. And then Long Beach State was unable to cash in the run with two outs. So the 2-1 to Briones from Mason. That's going to be fouled out of play. Good piece of hitting, but just not enough to get just inside the first base line. Got someone in the bullpen warming up for the beach. Also got Lauren Lombardi swinging the bat in case she's called on for pinch hitting duties. But first, Long Beach State just needs base runners. They've had plenty of them. This team has been riddled, this game has been riddled with errors, walks, and now a couple of hits, but the Beach just need a hit and a couple clutch hits as the 2-2 fouled away. Good swing there from Briones. Right now it's going to be Mason at about 74 pitches on the afternoon. Seems like she's dealt with the toughest of her challenges with the weather. But now she's just got to make sure she can mow down the rest of the Long Beach State lineup for the rest of the game. The 2-2 from the sophomore. And Briones stays alive. Just kind of throwing her hands at that one as it goes sharply off the screen. Mason ZRA slowly crawling down at the 1-2-9 mark at the moment. She's only walked one. And when you don't give up that many free base runners... Generally, a way for success is the 2-2 two -two just misses up and in, 3-2. and two. Maybe Briones can work walk number two. The Beach trying to respond just like they did in the first. Oregon State took the lead. Long Beach State answered in the bottom of the first. 3-2. Hammered foul off the foot as they throw from Noons to Hamu to first, trying to complete the play, but... Home plate umpire says no, that was foul. Got a piece of Briones. We'll stay, we'll stay here at the plate, three and two. Good lengthy at bat here by Briones. As Coleman had to face two lengthy at bats of her own when she was pitching in the circle in the top half. Three, two. That's gonna stay foul down the third base line. So Briones working in as Noons decided to throw it over to first once again, even though it was clearly foul. Just kind of chuckling to herself. Hamoud wasn't really paying attention, saying, what are you doing over there? Eagerly waiting on deck. Maddie Ruffin. Three and two. And that's going to be outside, ball four. Oregon State fans groaning. Long Beach State fans kind of up in arms and saying, all right, we'll take it. Walk number two. Given up today by Mason. So Maddie Ruffin coming up. All she's got to do is keep the line moving. If she can get on, the tying runner, the tying run will be at the dish in the form of Nicole Fry, who is still looking for her first hit of the 2019 campaign. Only in game number two of her return, though. Ruffin takes a strike right down the heart of the plate, 0-1. One for eight this year, struck out in inning number two. Long look at her wrist for the signs. Mariah in the circle. Mariah Mason. The 0 1. Rough in. Huge swing and a miss. Comes up empty. So Rough in just got to put the ball in play. She can find a way to just kind of slap it the other way through the 5 6 hole. Long Beach might have something doing. Two-strike pitch, misses outside, one and two. Good eye by Ruffin. 
who only has one strikeout this year, but that did come against Mason in the second. She's also scored a run in her limited playing time. Trying to prove to the coaching staff she deserves more time. Looked pretty strong at center field defensively. It's the one two misses low, and it's evened up two and two. Looks like Mason's just trying to hit her spots, pinpoint every single target, and she's been hitting them, just missing, not to the liking of home plate umpire Laura Head. The 2 2 will go once again. And it'll be swung on a miss strike three, and that time Ruffin went chasing and didn't get him up with anything. So that's out number one. Strikeout victim number three, the second time she's gotten Ruffin down swinging. So now Nicole Fry, there's ever a time to get her first hit. This would be a perfect opportunity. Her team down by three in the bottom of inning number five. But now Long Beach State gonna have the top of the order and Fry, Hernandez, and Wren up. Trying to come back. First pitch to Fry. Takes inside, 1-0. to As I mentioned, her last plate appearance went nine pitches long, faced an 0-2 count, fouled off six consecutive pitches after facing and falling down 0-2 before she smacked one to center field on the rope just straight to the center fielder Garcia. The 1-0 is fouled out of play, 1-1. One one. You can see now Fry getting a little bit more comfortable with game action, getting the flow back in, the rhythm of the swing. 0 for 4 so far this year. Still at first base is Briones, so went out, went on here, bottom five. And that's going to miss low, 2 and 1. So now Fry, after having to face an 0 2 count, has worked a couple of balls in this one. Mason just kind of playing catch with herself, taking a look at the signs towards her third base dugout. Just saying, all right, I can get through this. 2-1. That's laced to the shortstop. That's going to get booted at short by Raider. A little bit of a funky hop there. A little bit of a knuckler to shortstop. Can easily be ruled an error, which it is. And three errors apiece, as now it's going to be Raider's second error of the game was a bit of a knuckler that didn't hop up as high as she really thought it was going to. It was in the hole, so it was going to be a tough play nonetheless. But now Nicole Fry still looking for her first hit. I was wondering if they're going to give her some hometown scorekeeping right there and give her her first hit, but no, it was an error. So both teams now have committed three errors. So six combined errors in this one. Bring up Naomi Hernandez. It's the tying run at the dish. She takes ball one, still one out. Hernandez and Wren do up. Naomi today, 0 for 2, two ground outs, one to short, one to second base. Second time for Fry reaching base in two games. 1-0 misses outside, 2-0. Meanwhile, left fielder Burden was trying to back up the thrower, playing really shallow right there in that last pitch, but kind of backing up now, cheating towards the left field line. Like it's where Hernandez likes to place her opposite field hits. The 2-0. Weak chopper to second. It's going to be thrown to second for one. Not in time to first as they decide not to throw to first. Ryder just holds on to it. Good play by Yabara. As now it's runners on the corners. Hernandez now 0 for 3. Bring up Jamie Wren. So Wren, one of the two Long Beach State players today with a base hit in the ball game. Coming up. It's going to be Briones at third. Fry retired at second. Now the runner at first is Hernandez. So Ren once again, the form of the tying run at the dish. Two outs. The beach down four to one. Long Beach State. Three run shot can tie it up. But I'm sure Ren just trying to say, hey, let's go up the middle. Get one run at a time. And that's going to be a line drive to shore. That's going to be booted once again by Raider. A tough hop going to third is going to be Hernandez in the beach. Now down four to two. That was a line drive, one hop off the shortstop. And that would be a tough error to take for Raider. And they're going to give her an error. That's the fourth of the game, third against her. So now the beach have scored two runs, both unearned, both with two outs. 
and Ren reaches with the error by the shortstop. Now there's going to be a meeting in the circle. It's 4-2, to two, Alyssa Gonzalez up. Tying run at first base, scampering over to third was Hernandez. So now it's two unearned runs. We have a combined fun un four unearned runs out of the six total between the two teams. Both runs scored in the first were unearned. The last run scored by Oregon State due to the error from Jamie Run was unearned as it went through her legs. But now two errors by the shortstop on back-to-back -back plays. And no, now, okay, they've officially changed the scoring. They've changed it from the fourth error to a hit. So Ren now has a hit and an RBI, so official scoring change. I thought that was stung pretty well by Ren myself. And looks like that's going to be the end of the day and the end of the line for Mason. And that's going to be a pitching change. So when we come back, we'll have word of the new pitcher in the circle. What the scoring change was as they keep debating up in the, the press box area saying, hey, scores say, well, what are we going to choose? Is it going to be a hit and error? It's officially hitting an RBI single for Ren. More coming up, up, up on that in a moment. Four to two, still two outs, two on bottom five on 22S Radio and on Beach Vision. So quick change in the circle. Mira Nelson is the new pitcher for Oregon State, the righty. 267 ERA. Comes in, a 2-0 win-loss record. First pitch, Gonzalez misses inside, 1-0. So once again, let's set the stage for you. 4-2 in the bottom of the fifth, two on, two out for Gonzalez. An error by Raider at short allowed the inning continue. Another hard stinger by Wren to Raider. Bounced off of her, but they changed the error to a hit, so... Only three errors. Gonzalez hammers it down the line. That's going to score one. Wren on her horse at third. They're going to send her. Wren, the play at the plate is going to be close, and it will be out at the plate. And the first base coach is not happy. Slams her clipboard in frustration. Long Beach State is saying, what are you doing? They thought Wren slid, slid in safely. Coach Souter saying, how can you throw out my first base coach? But at the moment, a hose at the dish and through five it's four to three coach Satter is saying please ask for some help and how can you also throw away my assistant coach out of the ball game as she came in and just slammed her clipboard in front of home plate umpire Laura Head who emphatically punched out the runner at the dish Ren who made the error in the top half of the inning that allowed that fourth run to score for Oregon State gets thrown out at the plate after Gonzalez her double does not score the second run on that play. So we're going to go to top of inning number six. Coach Satter still having some words, but after five, we've got ourselves a ball game. The Beach cannot tie the game up, but they do score two heading to inning number six. It's four to three here on 22S Radio and Beach Vision.
Top of inning number six here in Long Beach. Zach Anderson, Yoxham with you guys on the call. Through five innings, Oregon State takes the four to three lead. But out after some fireworks in that fifth inning, and once again, the beach responded to Oregon State runs with two of their own. It was just the play at the plate that ended the bottom of the fifth, a strong throw to hose the runner at the dish. Hosing J.B. Wren for out number three and cutting down what would be the tying run. Getting thrown out was Panita Thanathorn. That a thorn, my apologies on the, the name right there, if I can get it correct. The associate head coach, Panita Thanathorn, as she was coaching first base at the time, came up to the home plate umpire in frustration, slammed her clipboard, and was screaming at the call, and imme immediately got thrown out of the ball game. Now Coach Kim Snatter having some more words. I believe there's a change of some sort for Oregon State. But at the moment, Benita has been thrown out of this one after being extremely disappointed in the call at home plate, thinking Wren slid around the tag from the from catcher McLaughlin. But meanwhile, we're waiting for play to start here on top of inning number six. Coleman going to work once again. And we're in for a fun last two innings for sure. So Coleman through five innings, giving up only three hits, four runs, only two of them have been earned. She's walked three and struck out four. And all three hits came in that fifth inning as she went four and a third hitless innings. But then Oregon State started to get to her. Hamoud had a lengthy at bat against her. Got a base hit to left that scored one and then the error by Wren brought in the second. And it's now that error by Wren, ironically, that is the difference in this one and it was her getting thrown out at the dish that c kept the beach from getting tied in the bottom of the fifth. So still some words between the coaching staff and the umpires here. Still awaiting some changes. Due up for Oregon State is Jessica Garcia, who today is 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. From all, for the only thing I've seen, it's only been Panita who's been ejected from this one. Pretty sure Kim Satter has not been ejected. But now back to this one, Jessica Garcia, who's hitting 258, a 303 on base percentage. Trying to get her first hit against Coleman today. Who's been pretty strong, just some bad luck today as that first pitch misses outside, one to know. Coleman kind of wiping her sleeves. Wipes her hand off on her visor and says, all right, let's get ready to go. The blue skies that we once had, now glooming dark overcast clouds here once again, 2-0. The breeze starting to pick up, so kind of moody weather today. Can't decide whether it wants to be sunny and happy or cloudy and mean. Nonetheless, fireworks in this game, 2-0. One hopper, no, a line shot to McCullum, who throws it to first nonetheless. And that's going to be an out number one. A nice line drive by Garcia, but straight to the glove of Sydney at second. And that's out number one. Going to bring up. I believe it's going to be Michelle Sass coming in for Chance Burden, who was playing in left field, dropped the ball on left. That allowed the first Long Beach State run to score for bring in Sass. Only has had one AB on the year. Sass takes ball one low and away. Struck out in that only at bat. Trying to bring some of that Sass to this at bat. One to no. Top six. Four to three. Oregon State lead. Got all sorts of funky offense and defense today. Chopper to third, Gonzalez snags it to first in time for the out. And Sass is pretty much robbed of her first base hit of the year. Good job by Gonzalez, just ranging to her left. If she kind of olated and missed it, would have gone right past her, but making sure her glove was in the right position. Two quick outs for, for Coleman. So now bring up Yabara. 0 for 1 today. But been solid defensively at second. First pitch, gonna be just outside, one to no. So the scoring line looks like this, four runs, three hits, three errors, four left on base for Oregon State. The Beach 
three runs, four hits, three errors, four left on base. The 1-0. Shot back off the screen. That looked those, like it was coming straight for me, if not for the screen. One and one. Coleman at the moment, now at 100 pitches for this game. So, triple digits for her pitch count today. The 1-1. Off speed, didn't get a good grip on that one. Ever since she threw a, a dandy of an off speed pitch to Hamoud earlier in the game, hasn't really found the same grip on it ever since the rain came and left. Been trying to find it ever since. Been only working with the fastball in and out of the zone since. The 2 1. Fouled back off the screen, and some of the fans a little bit skittish as the ball comes straight towards them, and but behind the screen, it won't come after you. People jump in, oh no. But we're safe with the screen for now. Two and two the count. Coleman trying to get a one, two, three inning and get the beach back in the dugout and trying to tie this thing up in the bottom of the sixth. But first, the two, two from Coleman. Misses outside. Cameron Yobara, 160 batting average. Walked back in the fifth inning to start things off and get things cooking for the Oregon State offense. That's what started that three-run rally in the top of the fifth. The 3-2. And that misses low ball four. That's the second base on balls. Yabar is taking this game. She jogs over to first base. Looks like we're going to have a bit of a change for the number nine hole hitter as well. We'll wait till the... the Raider, number 27, Izzy Owen. So Izzy Owen taking the place of Raider. Pretty sure head coach Laura Berg is not going to be happy with her shortstop's defense today as that one misses low and away 1-0. Raider making two errors, was almost credited for a third before they changed it to a base hit, which I thought was rightfully so by Jamie Wren. But not feeling the ball cleanly at second base when she was receiving throws or under possession ranging around at shortstop. The 1-0. That one's going to be in there in the outer half. Strike one. So Raider giving up to Izzy Owen, who's had 25 at-bats this year, six hits, hitting 240. No RBIs, two runs scored. Trying to keep this inning going and bring it back to Shelby Weeks in the top of the order. The 1-1. One, one. That's going to be in there for a strike, one and two. So now Long Beach State kind of running back and forth, making sure no throw goes behind Coleman. Trying to make sure they're set up defensively for Izzy Owen. Pitch hitting for Raider. We'll see if Raider comes back at short or if it's going to be Owen for the rest of the, for the rest of the game here on out. The one two. Misses outside, two and two. Deuce is a bit wild here now, top six as the cold, icy, chilly winds coming back here in Long Beach. Thought we were done with those. Outfield playing rather shallow for Owen, especially in right with Hernandez, and especially in center with Ruffin. And they say she goes around for strike three. Coleman gets the huge strikeout despite giving the two-out walk to Yabara. So she works around a two-out walk. We'll be back the, the special for the inning, some of the in-game promotions. If Long Beach hits a home run. There'll be some in and out gear or some in and out specials given out to the fans, depending on who's the loudest. And be perfect time for the home run inning. If Long Beach State can hit one, maybe two. Got some of the big bats to do it right now. Roll in and follow some of the big power in the Long Beach State lineup. The one, two, back up the middle for a leadoff single. So Roland's like, "How about you shut up, Zach, and let's get a, a leadoff rally going?" As Roland gets her first hit of the afternoon. She's now one for three. Now batting number 15, Tierra Fallo. So now Tierra Fallo coming up, no outs after that leadoff single for Taylor Rowland. Fallo came up with two on in the bottom of the fourth, hit into a double play, a 5 3 double play at third base. So. That ended the fourth inning threat. The Long Beach State came right back in the fifth and scored two. Follow takes the strike on the outer half, 0-1. So some changes defensively for the Beavers. It's still Garcia and Weeks in center and 
right, but Burden comes back in to play left after getting pinch hit for by Sess. The infield, quite the amount of shifts. The 0-1, off speed, and Follow pops it up to second base. That's going to be caught by the new second baseman, Izzy Owen, who came in for the shortstop Raider. Pretty sure Oregon State side is not happy with their shot shortstop, making multiple errors today. So moving over to shortstop is Noons from third to short, and now moving from second to third is Yabara. Meanwhile, Hamoud staying at first base. So now one out, bring up Sydney McCullum. Run, go, tying run still at first base. She takes upstairs, one to no. So that time, follow was trying to go for the big swing, but was fooled and popped it weakly up to second base. Roland still at first. Hoping anything in the gap will mean a game tying run. Meanwhile, Nelson misses in again, 2-0. So far this year, 26 strikeouts, only two walks. So not the most wild of pitchers if you're Long Beach State expecting a walk here, the 2-0. That's gonna catch the zone, two and one. We just know she's gonna throw some strikes. She has given up eight extra base hits, five doubles and three home runs in 21 and two thirds innings. Has given up 27 hits, so vulnerable to a hit. The 2-1 misses inside, so now 3-1. and one. Maybe the broadcaster's jinx here. McCullum, both ground outs in her ABs today to first base, 0 for 2. 217 batting average, 419 on base percentage, though. And she lines it foul, tailing down the right field line, 3-2. and two. We'll see if Long Beach State decides to put the runner in play, Roland and see if they try to do a somewhat of a hit and run. So three balls, two strikes to Sydney. Trying to get things going for the beach, who now have five hits after that leadoff single from Roland, but one out here, bottom six. Run out of time to tie things up. Popped up, and that's gonna be right over my head and out of play, so McCullum gonna stay alive here after a couple of foul balls. Trying to make sure she Trying to keep the Long Beach State rally going. On deck is Briones, who's reached base both times. And then in the hole, possibly Matty Ruffin. Most likely a pinch hitter. 3-2 is going to be ball four. Wow. That's going to be a nice base on balls. Seemed like Cindy McCollum knew what was going on. She scampered to first. Either just lucky and happy to get the base on balls, because that was pretty darn close. Oregon State fans were saying, wait a minute there. Nope, that's ball four. Bring up Justine Briones. One out, two on. The one bat in the bottom of the lineup that if you're Long Beach State, you would love to have up one for one and work the walk back in the bottom of the fifth. Led things off for the Long Beach State rally in bottom five with the walk. A lengthy at bat, she won the battle. So Mira Nelson, as I mentioned, who came in 26 Ks, two walks, now give up, gives up for only her third walk of the year. As that time, trying to tee up on a fastball was Briones. Fouls that one back out of play. On deck is Lauren Lombardi, as I mentioned. Ruffin would most likely be pinched up for, and that's going to be Lombardi's spot. Coming back for one final year as Briones. Once again, quickly down 0-2. That one's going to bounce off the... The clubhouse there and come back towards the softball complex. So quickly down 0-2. Roland at second. McCullum at first. Two on, one out. Tying run in scoring position. Go ahead run at first. Outfield playing really shallow for McCullum. Make that Briones. Who does have a home run this year. So some sneaky pop from the catcher for the beach. 0-2. The pitch from Nelson. Misses way upstairs. Tried to go with the heat. The high heat, and instead, Briones said, that's not something I'm going to chase. I have a 429 batting average. Not going to go chasing after that one. The 1 2 coming up next. Briones lifts it to center, and that's going to be caught up in the wind. Going to be caught. Roland fakes the tag, and they're going to throw it to second base on a hop, but not in time as it's cut off there by Noons. So. Puts it in play in center field as it was caught by Garcia, but no advancement for either runner. Bring up Lauren Lombardi to pinch hit for Maddie Ruffin. 
there would be a chance for a home run in the home run inning. Lombardi would be the one. So two outs, two on in Long Beach State. Trying to catch lightning in a bottle here in the form of Lauren Lombardi. Dealt with various injuries to her knees over the career here and been granted extra year of eligibility. And now finding a way to come up clutch in what could be her very final year. Every at bat could be her final at bat as she final fouls it back out of play. Huge hat going one. She puts it on the ground, isn't the fleetest of foot, so won't be one to beat it out, but she can easily send it deep or crush one to the fence as now the rain's slowly gonna pick up again. The 0-1 from Nelson. That one misses low and in, one and one, and quickly the rain coming back to affect things here in Long Beach. So after everybody put away all their rain gear, it's getting picked up once again, the rain. One and one, two outs, two on, bottom six, Beach down by one, Lombardi. Sees the off speed, go upstairs, two and one. And if Lombardi gets on base, most likely a pinch runner. And then of course, Nicole Fry on deck. Who, as I'll keep mentioning, still searching for that first hit of 2019, the two one. And it's gonna be slowly hit to short, the new shortstop is Noons, fires to first. And they're gonna say, no, it's a foul ball, wait. And they're looking, and they're gonna say a Foul ball, Is there, are they gonna rule it catcher's interference? I believe they might rule this catcher's interference. And they're having a word with the Oregon State side. Laura Head home plate umpire saying, hold up. It was the new first base coach for the beach pointing, hey, no, let's, let's hold up here. Inning not over. So I think Lombardi is going to be safe at first. I believe a ruling of catcher's interference is going to be the one, and Maddie Ruffin checking back in for Lombardi, so the Beach get a break here. Two outs, base is juice for Nicole Fry. And once again, a gift for Long Beach State. Now batting number 13, Nicole Fry. So if I'm correct, that should be catcher's interference against McLaughlin. That's the only reasonable explanation I could think of. Nicole Fry takes strike one down the heart of the plate, 0-1, right as the rain starts to fall. So Nelson a bit of a jam, bases loaded, tying run at third, go ahead run at second, Fry, who is, need, who is named the top 50 player to watch list, trying to prove it here, the 0-1. And she takes a fastball inside, but it's called a strike. Fry not happy with that call. But as we, she showed earlier, 0-2, she's not afraid to have a lengthy at bat for that one. Trying to pump up the Long Beach State crowd here. Greatest opportunity to tie or take the lead here. Fry with the 0-2. She's gonna pop it up to right center. Oregon State looking like they're gonna be right there. It's gonna be caught. What a catch in right field running in by Weeks. Had to run in. Second baseman Izzy Owen didn't know where it was. Looked like it was gonna fall out of her glove with the snow cone. But she holds on and makes the catch. So the beach, strand, the base is loaded after getting a second chance at life here in the bottom of the sixth. So they strand three here in inning number six, going to the top of inning number seven. The beach still down four to three. They have to get through these top of the seventh before they can try and get their last crack at it. Listen to Long Beach State softball on 22S Radio and on Beach Vision. Welcome back to Long Beach. Inning number seven, the final inning here in Long Beach. Gonna play the full seven. Unlike yesterday, where it was stopped short in the top of the seventh and final after six due to darkness. Might be cloudy, but we're still gonna play the full seven. First pitch from Coleman misses upstairs to Shelby Weeks, so top of the order due up for Oregon State, one, two, and three. The Beavers up four to three. I'm Zach Anderson, York Simon with you guys on the call. That's going to be chopped right back up the middle. Leadoff single for Weeks. Fourth hit of the game for Oregon State. And that's going to be the second hit of the game for Weeks. She's now two for four. Seen the ball a lot better than the last two times against Coleman. 
So Levy Lopez trying to get some insurance runs for Oregon State. Because Long Beach State in their own half of the seventh will have Hernandez, Rand, and Gonzalez. Very dangerous three to half coming up. First pitch to Lopez. Back, almost a back pick as that first pitch is called a strike. Briones was getting ready to fire over to first, but Lopez kind of got in the way of that one, unsuspecting. So Briones decided not to throw down to first base. And they finally rule the error from the catcher's interference in the last inning. So that's the fourth error against Oregon State. Weak chopper in front of the plate. Briones picks it up. Not going to get it in time as that's going to be an infield single for Lopez who stumbles over to first base, and as she gets up, she's kind of motioning, hey, was I, was I was safe, right? And they're telling her, yeah, no, there was no throw. But a bad break for the beach. A little nubbler in front of the plate goes for an infield single, so now two on, nobody out here, uh, top seven. So Missy Noons now coming up with Hamoud on deck, and that's the one player you do not want up with multiple runners on base. Kim Satter walk into the circle to have a meeting with her infield. Noons, already today, one for three with an RBI and has a run scored, if I'm not mistaken. She reached on the first in the first with an air. So four to three here, top seven. Kim Satter walking back. Her own dugout. Cloudy, gloomy skies once again here. So the blue sky seems like it's taking a break here in Long Beach. Very cold, am I? But the beach trying to make sure they stop this Oregon State attack and get back only down one in the bottom of the seventh with their big boppers coming up. Last hit was the fifth of the game for Oregon State, all coming in the fifth inning or later. So Coleman to Noons lifts it foul. Giving chase is Hernandez and Roland, but that goes out of play. 0-1. Oh On deck, Hamoud is 1-for-2 with an RBI and reached on a base on balls. So now Coleman ready in the circle. 0-1. Oh Misses outside, 1-1. One and one. One ball, one strike to Noons, hitting 296 now. Already got RBI number 11 today, looking for number 12 out there at second. Noons pops it foul out of play, one and two. Now home plate umpires are going to go get some more new softballs because they keep running out of them. Lots of foul balls in today's game, lengthy at bats for both teams. So the... Line score looks like this, four runs, five hits, four hairs for Oregon State. Three runs, five hits, three hairs for Long Beach State. Combined seven hairs. And I thought Ole Miss having six hairs in game number one was absurd. And well, got combined seven hairs between the two teams in game number two of a doubleheader today. The one, two, misses low and in, two and two. Good spot to miss though. Not giving Noons anything to hit, but a little bit higher, and Noons would have been having a free swing at that one. So two balls, two strikes, two on, nobody out here, top seven. Beavers trying to add on. Swung on and missed. Huge strikeout by Coleman. That's going to be her sixth strikeout of the afternoon. She's only given up two earned runs today. Reaching the 120 pitch plateau today. Getting close to it. So now Frankie Hamoud. Already has an RBI today. First pitch to Hamoud. Just misses outside. On deck you have Bailey McLaughlin and Jessica Garcia combined 0 for 6. So just don't get beat by Hamoud here. Might have to just make sure. You might even put her on for the bases loaded with one out. Yes, that is a lot more difficult of a situation to deal with, but when the next two hitters combined 0 for 6, and you have the best hitter, one of the best, going to be in the Pac-12, might be one of the early rising stars and early runners in the lead for Pac-12 Freshman of the Year with Hamoud, the way she's swinging the bat right now. 
2-0. Hasn't gotten anything to hit yet. Coleman now taking her time. Gonzalez at third is like, let's get this game going. 2-0. Misses as Briones is jumping to her feet, ready to fire back to back pick at second base. But no throw, so 3-0. Being very careful with Hamoud, who's already burned them once with a lengthy at bat in the fifth. Got the RBI single that put some extra insurance runs at the time on the board for Oregon State as then a strike fired in by Coleman on 3-0. Before an error by Jamie Wren, letting the ball get through her legs, roll to the wall, brought in the fourth run. So technically the fourth run was not an RBI for Hamoud, but she did drive it in. The 3-1 from Coleman, foul back off the screen. And this is exactly where we were, top five, multiple runners on. Key situation, Hamoud at the plate. A chance to put Oregon State further in the lead. And a chance for Coleman to make sure this is one of the better starts of the year in the early going and kind of fire up her team. 3-2, chop to second base. It's gonna be a close play and they're gonna say runners interference as the runner ran into McCullum that was Lopez running to second base, so even though Weeks came around to try and score, it was a slow roller coming up with Sydney, and she runs into the runner, so they're gonna say the runner at second base, or going to second base was out. They say Weeks, who is advancing from second to third, has to go back to second base. So instead of runners on the corners, it's runners at first and second with two outs. And you were able to get out Hamoud technically once again. A huge break for the beach. Some funky plays in this ball game today. Runner's interference, catcher's interference, multiple errors, clutch hitting, funky plays left and right as the first pitch misses outside to McLaughlin. Funny game it's been today. Gloomy. Bright blue skies, gloomy. Kind of playing like the weather today, 2-0. Rain, no rain. Stay tuned for the bottom of the seventh. That's sure going to be an adventure for sure. With Hernandez, Ren, and Gonzalez due up. Combined four, three for eight today. The 2-0 to McLaughlin. Fouled out of play, 2-1. So right now, Coleman has a chance to get out of the inning after allowing two runners on, facing the three and four hitters up for Oregon State and getting them both out technically. Coleman, a long look at the sign, 2-1, two, two out, 4-3, Oregon State in the lead, seventh inning, and that misses three and one. Don't want to walk McLaughlin, but as I mentioned, Garcia on deck. Still 0 for three as well, but you're facing a freshman catcher in a huge situation here. This Oregon State team was off to their best start since 2003, 8-0. And she takes ball four outside, so now the bases are loaded. Coleman just trying to make it a little bit more tense of a situation. Garcia, the senior, swings lefty, 0 for three, hitting 250 on the year. So bases loaded, two outs. Coleman laboring here in the seventh. Over 130 pitches to try and get out of this seventh inning. Coleman, the pitch in there for a strike, 0 and 1. The Beach need this out to only be down by one heading to the bottom of the seventh. Got some big boppers coming up. Hernandez, ran nine, a glimmer of hope. Hernandez, 0 for 3 today, the 2-0. Takes in there for a strike, 2 and one Nelson's gone through an inning and a third so far, faced seven hitters, given up two hits, 23 pitches, 26 Ks on the year to her three walks. On deck is Jamie Wren, followed by Gonzalez, and if we get to her, Taylor Rollins. That's a high fly ball to center, and it's going to the track at the wall, cuts. At center field by, Gonza by Garcia. That was stung by Hernandez. Right up against the wall for out number one. A good swing there by Hernandez four, on the 2-1. Stung that softball. 
but just not enough to get it out to dead center. Bring up Jamie Wren, who today is two for three, an RBI and a run scored. One out. That one misses outside, one to no. As I mentioned, Nelson has given up quite a few hits in her innings of action, 27 hits, eight earned runs, five doubles, three home runs. That was nearly the fourth she gave up, but still the beach. Got to get some runners on base. But everybody who's hitting has a chance and the opportunity to hit it out. The 1-0 in the zone for a strike. But the wind playing tricks on the outfielders today and on the ball. So anything hit in the air can either get pushed back, pushed to the left, pushed to the right, depending on which way the swirls decide to go. The 1-1 to Wren. That's laced up the middle. That's going to be a one-out single for the beach. They got the tying run aboard. Red now three for four today. A good day for her at the plate. Bring up Alyssa Gonzalez. Number 23, Alyssa Gonzalez. She's one for two today. Her first at bat was a fly ball to left center. Of, that was dropped by Bird and brought in a run. Her at bat in the fifth inning, which was her last at bat, she was facing the newly, the new pitcher, at the time, Nelson greeted her with a double to the corner where Jamie Wren was hosed at the dish at the time, the tying run. First pitch to Gonzalez in there for a strike, 0-1. Gonzalez has technically reached base all three times. The air, a two-base error in the first, walked in the fourth, and a double and an RBI to end the inning in the fifth. Has no home runs, but certainly has the pop to do so. The 0-1, low and away, 1-1. One Ren, some speed at first, but as I've mentioned, already been cut down at the dish once today. On deck, Taylor Rowland. Nelson slowly laboring here in the bottom of the seventh, the 1-1. One, one. Inside, 2-1. One, one. Each now with six hits, three of them via Jamie Ren. Gonzalez hitting 400 on the year. Has eight RBIs, looking for RBI number nine out there on the base paths. The 2-1. Misses in the dirt, low, 3-1. A good hitter's count for Gonzalez. And I'm sure she's going to let this one fly if she can see a good pitch that she likes. As I mentioned, Nelson likes to throw these in the strike zone, so most likely going to be something to hit. The 3-1. That's lifted to foul territory in right field, giving chase and watching it go on top of the batting cages here. Was Weeks giving chase, but now the count is full. So count three and two, one out, tying run on first base. Last inning here in the last licks for the beach, bottom seven. Trying to end a three game skid. All those losses have been here at home in the Stacey Winsburg Invita Invitational. The 3 2. Misses inside. Ball four. Gonzalez pumping up her teammates, saying, Let's go. Let's go. Tying run now in scoring position in the form of Jamie Wren at second base. Just go ahead, run at first base. So bring up Taylor Rollins. A chance to tie or win the game with a single or extra bases. So one out, two on for the beach, down by one, bottom seven. So Roland facing Nelson. Last time, greeted her with a leadoff single in the sixth. First pitch, off speed, that's gonna fall in there for a strike. So Roland trying to have some late inning magic for the beach. Hitting 310, one for three today. 0 for 1. Off speed. They get her again. 0, for, 0 and 2. And Roland has to take a deep breath and say, come on, let's go. Now it has some two-strike approach trying to tie things up. A huge gap between left and center. So the left-center gap is wide open for Roland to pepper it through. The 0-2. Off speed again, but this time upstairs. Trying to catch Roland off guard. Taylor this year, the first baseman. Five RBIs, trying to look for RBI number six, possibly seven to win the game. Four extra base hits, three doubles and a home run. The one-two, huge swing, but foul back. 
just trying to stay alive, but had a huge swing trying to send that one deep. And we're going at it once again, one and two. Second base is Wren, first base is Gonzalez. One out, Tierra Follow on deck. The beach dugout making noise. This is low and away, two and two. Nelson having to battle here in the late innings. Two and two. Rolling on the year has had more walks than she has had strikeouts. Has a good eye at the plate, the two two. That's in the dirt, but good block behind the dish by McLaughlin. Count running full. Rolling, great battle here. After she was down 0-2 in the count. Works it now to three and two. In this at bat, it's been Nelson working heavily with the off speed. Three, two. That's laced to left center, but Wren was going the wrong way. So she's gonna be sent home and she's on her way to the plate and she is going to score to tie things up here in the seventh. Wren who had to go back to second base after seeing the line drive to short. Nunes could not make the play. Vernon kind of dove on her feet to make sure the ball did not get past her. Ran around, Coach Kim Satter waving her home and the beach have tied it here in the seventh. Still only one out. Gonzalez at second base. And now Roland, who's tied things up here in the seventh, has now let the beach all the way back. Coach Kim Satter having a word with her senior DP, Tierra Fallo, who has a chance to win things here for the beach. Crowd stomping their feet here in the Long Beach State Softball Complex. Two cracks at it to win here for the beach with one out. Great piece of hitting by Roland, 0-2, battles to 3-2, base hit to left center, and Wren, despite having a bad jump and a bad read on the ball, runs all the way around and gives the beach a tie ball game. It was Wren earlier in the fifth who got cut down at the plate when the beach tried to tie things up then, but this time she would not be denied. Coach Souter emphatically saying, let's go, let's go, and we're tied here in the seventh. The beach trying to win here in their last licks. We're tied, follow the pitch, pops it foul out of play, 0-1. Aggressive swing. After follow, we have Sydney McCullum, 0-2. She's 0-2. for Meanwhile, follow, 0 for 3 today. She has grounded into a double play, so that is very much a possibility. 0 and 1 from Nelson. Takes it outside, 1 and 1. And you knew the beach would not go down fighting without a fight here in the bottom of the seventh. Too many things have been going wonky in this one. It seemed almost destined to at least be tied, or at least something happened in the seventh. The 1 1. Off speed. This is upstairs, two and one. And if you're follow, might as well just, anything you do, just put the ball in play. Four Oregon State errors today. Meanwhile, the Beach have committed three of their own. The two one, fouled out of play, two and two. So two balls, two strikes, one out. Winning run is at second base here in the seventh. Meanwhile, Roland just Hanging there at first base. Rain slowly beginning to fall once again here in Long Beach. It's been off and on the entire game. The 2-2. Huge swing, but foul back off the screen for Tierra. Nelson's pitch count now reaching up into the 50s. The beach dugout getting louder and louder with every pitch here. The 2-2. Follow, ready. Laces it to center field, it's gonna drop. They're gonna hold the runner Gonzalez at third. The Long Beach State crowd thought that that was the winner, but playing shallow, very shallow, was Garcia in center. So a great piece of two strike hitting for Tierra Follow, but they held the runner at third. Base is loaded, one out. And normally this might be an opportunity where Long Beach would use Lauren Lombardi to pinch hit possibly, but They've already used their ace up their sleeve earlier in the sixth inning. So bring up Sydney McCollum, a chance to win the game.
Bases loaded, one out. We're tied at four, the pitch. Sydney, huge swing, but fouls it way out of play. On deck, Justine Briones, who's one for two and reached base twice. Beach now with eight hits overall today. A huge rally here in the last inning for the beach. Great two strike approaches by multiple players. A little weak chopper to the circle. So home for one to first, not in time. And for a second there, Nelson was unsure of what to do. She kind of was frozen for a second, kind of telling her teammates, yeah, I had no idea what was going on. She paused and she almost threw it to first base. And that would have won the game for the beach, but she rega regained her composure and threw it back home for the force out. So now two outs, base is juiced for Justine Briones. And now you exchange Gonzalez at third, move Roland to third, follow to second, and McCullum to first. Briones. And that's going to get away from the catcher, and no, they're not going to send the runner Roland as McLaughlin was rushing back to that ball. Nearly a pass ball. Almost won that game for the beach. You want to know. How ironic as Long Beach State lost yesterday due to a, a wild pitch in the fifth inning against Boise State. The beach looking for win number four here. On the bat of Briones, the 1-0 is popped up, coming in, trying to make the catch, and that's going to be a nice running grab by Hamoud. And what do you know? We're destined for extra innings, of course. After seven full, the beach come all the way back to tie it 4-4. Four, four. And we're playing seven. more softball. Why not? Run, it's been a perfect day to play. Let's play some more. Coming up next on 22S Radio and on Beach Vision. Oregon State, it's Garcia, the last out. It's the bottom of the order for Oregon State. We're starting off with Chance Burden. Trying to lay down the bunt, and it's going to be fouled off. Late call there by the home plate umpire. But it's strike number one. Light rain falling here in the LB. Nothing too dramatic, but could be a play here in extra innings. So the tiebreaker rule is runner at second base, the last out. Nobody out and start with the fresh side of the lineup as the 0-1 misses upstairs one and one. Coming back out is Ashley Coleman, who's pitched a full seven innings, already thrown 130 plus pitches, and she's ready to go back to work with only giving up two earned runs. So it's gonna be Burden, Yabara, and Owen up for the those Beavers as the bunt is fouled off out of play, so good job by Coleman with Burden now facing with the burden of trying to bunt with two strikes. If Coleman can get this out here without allowing the runner to advance, that'd be a huge advantage for the beach. Well, for Long Beach State, they're gonna have Ruffin and Fry in their own half of the eighth, and Hernandez. The one, two, popped up in the infield, and calling it is Coleman, and she makes the grab for out number one calling Briones, and Briones is kind of just like, ah, that's kind of my ball, but okay. So a huge play by Coleman, getting the pop out and making the play herself. So Cameron Yobara right there, making, is now coming up with one out, and runner still at second base. The bunt attempt not working for Burden, who's probably gonna have to hear an earful from her coach once he gets back to the bench. Still 4-4, tiebreaker rule in effect and extras here for the Stacy Winsberg Invitational. First pitch, misses upstairs, 1-0. So the Beach trying to play stout defense. The two teams combined today, seven errors. It's been back and forth. Oregon State jumped on the board first, 1-0. The Beach responded 1-1. 1-1, 1-0 one, 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 oh, fouled off the mask of Briones. It's gonna take some time, one and one. Then nothing doing for either side through the fourth inning. Long Beach State had a huge chance as they had two on, nobody out in the fourth before a Tierra Fallo double play ended the inning or ended a huge threat in the fourth. Top of inning number five. Oregon State finally got a hit against Ashley Coleman who was no hitting the Beavers through four and a third. 
since. The Beavers have five total hits, got a rally going, scored three in the top of the fifth. The Beach responded with two in the bottom number five, inning number five. And then inning number seven, the Beach got a huge game tying hit from Taylor Rowland. That's a huge swing to miss for strike number two by Yabara. So one and two the count, one out. The tiebreaker rule in the effect, so the runner at second base is Garcia. Still tied, top eight. First inning of extras, the one, two. Misses low and away, good stop by Briones. The Beach had a chance in the bottom of inning number seven with the bases loaded one out and back to back outs by Cindy McCollum and Briones, a ground out and a pop out. Allowed Oregon State to escape the threat. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on a missed strike three. Tipped into the glove. A huge strikeout by Coleman. Her seventh of the afternoon. A gutsy effort here by Coleman. Who has now thrown, I believe, around 140 pitches. Bring up Izzy Owen. Who took the place of the shortstop Raider who had made two errors earlier in the game, allowing Long Beach State back into the game, into the fifth inning. Two outs, runner still at second. Owen takes a strike, 0-1. Her first at bat, she struck out back in the sixth. Meanwhile, Oregon State's kicking themselves at a huge opportunity back in the seventh with two on, nobody out. You had Noons and Hamoud up and could not even advance the base runners. Yo one Chopped into play, coming in is actually going to be Briones and Coleman who touched the ball and it's going to be an infield single as Owens able to beat that out. Another little weak dribbler in front of the plate and that's going to be an infield single. I believe the second or third one of the game. Of course, more drama in effect. They actually consider that an error. So on the scoreboard, they're marking that error number four against the beach. So not an infield single, error number four at the moment as it stands. Meanwhile, it's Briones having to retire cleats and they change the scoreboard, make it hit number six and put the errors back to three. So now having Alyssa Gonzalez tie the shoes of Justine Briones because it's kind of stuck underneath her gear. So it's kind of not something you've seen. Crowd's gone stone quiet as a little bit of some breeze, some rain coming into effect. The sun shining through the clouds. Everything seems a little bit backwards. I see the sun in my face. It's raining, and the catcher is getting her own shoe tied for her. Of course, and we're in extra innings. Why not? We're tied at four. After the infield single by Owen, runners at first and third, Garcia at third, Owen at first, top of the order up, and Shelby Weeks. She's got two hits. She's two for four. Last two at-bats has had two hits. Coleman fires in a strike. If Coleman can get out of the inning unscathed, the Beach will have a glorious opportunity with the runner already at second base to try and take the win. They have Ruffin Fry Hernandez due up in the bottom of the eighth, 0-1. Just misses upstairs, 1-1 is now the rain starting to come into effect here. A lot more. So yesterday the beach, got to be careful of the wild pitch. That's how Boise State did them in yesterday. The 1-1, one, one lifted out of play, one and two. Coleman looking for strikeout number eight. She's had seven strikeouts, but five walks. Some of the, the big reasons for why she has a high pitch count. She's gone through seven and two thirds, only given up two earned runs so far. Oregon State has left eight on base so far. The one, two, misses low, two and two. Good place to miss. Weeks, couple of ground outs, back-to-back -back singles. One through the right side to break up the no-hitter and the last time in the seventh, sent it right back up the middle. So deuce is wild, two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. The pitch does not get the call, just misses low and away. Three and two, the count runs full on deck is Lovey Lopez would love a chance to take the lead if she can come up. Right now it's gonna be Weeks looking for hit number three. 
Excitement here in the softball complex. Last game of the Stacy Winsberg Invitational. That sky to left, and that's going to be out of play as Wren was giving chase, but goes out of play. We'll do it again. Weeks, so far in the season, has a 200 batting average with runners on base, a 100 batting average with runners in scoring position. So not the most effective at driving in runners. Has four RBIs on the year. 3-2. That's not going to get the call. Coleman was dancing on the in the circle. Gonzalez was dancing at third, saying, "Come on, let's let's ring it up." And instead, it's going to be a two-out walk. Walk number six for Coleman today. So the bases are now loaded for Lovey Lopez. So Lopez comes up, a chance to give Oregon State the lead. Lovey State will have their chance to respond in the bottom half, but they would love to do so without having given up a run. Coleman with two outs, pitch to Lopez. Does not get the call. The zone slowly getting squeezed at the moment. Trying to hit the corners and not getting the calls, 1-0. Coleman battling out there close to 140 pitches now the 1-0 misses low 2-0 and now she's in danger kind of losing the zone a bit here frustrated with the lack of strike calls rain hitting her as she's throwing every pitch got to deal with the adversity extra innings top of inning number 8 2-0 the pitch that's going to be chopped to second. McCollum fields it cleanly to first in time for round number three. So Coleman guts it out and goes through eight full. We're going to the bottom of inning number eight, the beach. A glorious chance to win this one. They'll have their own chance. It's going to be at second base. It's going to be Briones, the runner, with Ruffin, Fry, and Hernandez due up to win the game in extras. We'll be back in just a moment here on 22S Radio. And in fourth, we've won gone. And now the Beach have a chance to win an extra as we're tied at four. Tiebreaker rule in effect, so the runner at second base will be Briones. Leading off for the Beach this inning will be Maddie Ruffin, who is re-entered after Lauren Lombardi pinch hit for her last plate appearance, or last scheduled plate appearance. Meanwhile, it's going to be McLaughlin to fix something on her wrist of some sort. On deck is Nicole Fry. So a brief delay in action. I think we're good to go with McLaughlin, who's finally getting her wrist guard all set to go. And I believe it's Mariah Mazin back on the in the circle. Looks like it's Mazin back in. Ruffin going to bunt it, and it's going to get past the third baseman. Mazin to first in time to get out Ruffin. Good play by Mason, who immediately comes back into the circle for Nelson, re-enters and makes a, a great play after Ruffin had a great bunt. Moving over to third is, well, official scoring change right there is actually Wise, who pinch run for Breezy. Briones was pinch run for by Breezy Wise. So Wise at third base. Bring up Nicole Fry, yet to get a hit in their second game back from injury. What would it be? A great time to get a walk-off winner in your first hit of your senior year. Takes the first pitch outside, 1-0. Was 0 for yesterday. She's 0 for 4 today. A hit would start off her senior campaign with a walk-off winner. I think that would be a great way to go out. Infield in, outfield in here. The 1-0 to Fry. Hattiebert to deep left, over the fence, and gone! Nicole Fry! A two-run walk-off bomb to win the game. Fry says, not only can I hit it, I can send it over the fence. The senior, 6-4 to four to final. Fry got all of that. And we're heading into the Sunday evening with the Long Beach State comeback, extra inning, walk-off win. And Nicole Fry sends us into a win. Nicole Fry. Her first hit of her senior year is a walk-off two-run bomb. And Oregon State and Long Beach State will meet with a customary post-game handshake. But the Beach, after losing three consecutive, losing to this Oregon State team on Friday, a heartbreaker yesterday after a 3-0 lead. 
blown and losing in a shortened game due to darkness. Battle their way back down three.